What is happening, all of you beautiful people out there? What's going on? This is my first YouTube video made specifically for YouTube. If you don't know me, I'm Fonzai. Also, uh, my real name's Adam. I am a Twitch streamer, twitch.tv slash Fonzai. And uh, here we go, first YouTube video. I wanted to do something a little different for you guys. Uh, I want to talk about my very um, favorite experience with LSD. Um, so, as a little background, uh, you know, 18, maybe 19 years old, first apartment, living with my two best friends at the time, you know, first place away from home, and we liked to party. We enjoyed a bit of partying. So, you know, we were pretty much high 24-7, smoking weed all the time. We drank almost every single night. Uh, we were really into ecstasy. We would probably do ecstasy twice a week. Um, and, you know, every once in a while we'd mix in some mushrooms or some LSD. And uh, pretty much every time we tripped on, uh, on LSD, my buddy would always have a freak out every time we probably did it 10 times why did he continue to do it i don't know because it was inexperience i'm not sure but he always had a freak out so as the person who always remained calm and collected he would always tell me hey man if i have a freak out i'm gonna need you there you need to be with me and i would always acquiesce and every time we ended up splitting off from everybody else and just doing our own thing and basically I would have to talk him down he <laughs> there were several times he thought he was melting uh, and thought he was gonna die you know lots of lots of heavy stuff for him and I always enjoyed the shit out of my experiences well towards the end of um, our, our uh, LSD and drug fueled days, which was probably a brief eight month period, we had all been contemplating and just discussing uh, quitting doing drugs because we were doing a lot, quite a bit, in fact. And every time we tripped, my buddy that would freak out, he would split with me and he would start to talk to me about our drug usage and tell me he didn't think we should do it, and almost turned into a father figure, which at this time, uh, for me, was pretty heavy because uh, my father passed away when I was 12, so I was dealing with that a lot. Um, I was born into a Catholic family. I had uh, briefly, for a, like a six-month period or so, become devout Christian, uh, you know, and that was shortly after my father passed away, and I think it was a direct result of searching for an answer or something to help me through it. Uh, so I had been religious my whole life, even though it never really was anything that uh, was very interesting to me. I, I never really believed strongly. I never uh, enjoyed it. I never thought that uh, religion was really for me. Um, and, you know, six months of being a devout Christian, I snapped out of it. It was the weirdest thing. I was deeply Christian. I wouldn't curse. I, you know, sex was off the table. I think I was 14 or 15 at the time. Uh, you know, masturbation was off the table. All this stuff. I was, I just fell deep into it. And one day I just snapped out of it and realized it was making me, it was, you know, somebody that I wasn't. It was turning me into somebody I didn't like. Um, it was it was really interesting. It was a very strange experience, but I'm glad I went through it all. Uh, it's given me a great perspective on being religious and not being religious, and you know I'm not so religious now. But um, to get back to the story, back to the true story here. Um, so that's kind of where I am in my life. I'm still kind of struggling with religion, and uh, am I agnostic? Am I not religious at all? Um, and I still have, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of things going on in my head, trying to figure it out for myself. You know, I'm 18, 19 years old, just a, a young man, trying to figure things out. So, um, oddly enough, 
as we're doing these these uh, have, we're having these trips on LSD, and my buddy is kind of lecturing me almost in a father figure style. Uh, he st he starts to sound just like my dad. This happens on two or three different occasions where his voice is my dad's voice. It was unbelievably strange. Uh, and I always had this thing in the back of my head. Your dad's watching you. You probably shouldn't be doing so many drugs. He would be really disappointed. And it just, it like matched up perfectly with exactly what my friend was saying and being under the influence of a psychotropic drug made me uh, envision my dad's voice, I guess. It, it sounded exactly like it, and I almost felt like my dad was talking to me through my friend and trying to give me advice. It was intense. Uh, made me, it would make me break down and cry. And I was just like, I think that was my dad. I don't know. It was, uh, it was amazing, though. I mean scary intense but beautiful amazing and some of the best experiences i ever had after uh my dad passed away because then i suddenly felt very close to him again it was it was cool so uh, getting to the actual story here that's just the precursor to the real story uh so the actual story goes basically that friend moved out um we had kind of slowed down doing the drugs, but I was still kind of into it. Uh, and I was living with uh, my other buddy who was still there in the apartment. And we were getting ready to go our separate ways and all get our own places. Well, uh, I had this crew, this car crew that I used to hang out with where we all, you know, used to soup up our cars and stuff. So they were kind of friends, but not close, close friends, I would say. Um, we were out at a club. We had uh, taken some ecstasy, danced the night away, uh, just kind of hung out. As we're coming down, we leave the club and we take off back to their spot, which was, you know, maybe two or three miles away from my place at the time. Uh, we ended up, I don't even remember how or where it came from. Somebody got their hands on some LSD and we get back to their place, we take it, and we start playing Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo 2, maybe, I don't know, one of those on PlayStation. So, uh, you know, we're sitting there, we're playing the game, maybe an hour or so goes by after we take the LSD, and I am flying. I am just suddenly tripping really, really hard. And I'm looking around, and I see they're not whatsoever. And suddenly, I feel very out of place, I'm the only one tripping, uh, you know, even though I kind of know these guys, I don't know them that well, and I don't really feel comfortable being there, so, uh, <laughs> don't ever recommend doing this, um, I end up wanting to go home, and I'm, I'm really, uh, not in the best state of mind to be driving, so this was a horrible idea, but, uh, jump in my car, drive home. Uh, just kind of, you know, kind of get my shit together. Luckily, I had a lot of experience uh, being on LSD and, and being in this state of mind. So I kind of had things under control for the most part. You know, I felt comfortable enough to drive home. Um, so I drove home, get there. At the time, we had uh, one of my good buddy's little brothers living with us. And we were just kind of doing him a favor, letting him stay with us till he got you know, his shit sorted out. He was pretty heavily into drugs and drinking and all that kind of stuff. Even for us, we looked at him like, oh, dude, you you need to slow your shit down, man. So, um, he's there. It's two in the morning, three in the morning, something like that when I get there, maybe even later. And he's just playing video games. He's playing a game called Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. I believe it was on Nintendo 64. I get in, and I sit down, and I'm just like, dude, I've had a crazy night. I am tripping my balls off. I just want to relax. Uh, and he's like, cool, man. Why don't you just watch me play this game? And so I'm just like, that sounds fun. So I sit there. I'm watching him play this game. And he 
is showing me cheat codes. He's showing me all the weapons of the game. And this game is a little unusual. Uh, even for video games, it was unusual. It was very unique. And it was kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Uh, I was definitely... I don't, I don't even know the words to describe how I felt, but I was a bit scared. I was in awe. I was excited. It was, you know, good and bad, all this stuff. And he finally ends up saying, Hey man, if you think all that was cool, check this out. And he punches in this cheat code. And this cheat code is called Pen and Ink Mode. And it's not really a cheat. It actually just changes the way the game looks. So the game turns into basically what looks like somebody drew it on a piece of paper uh, and he starts running around it's this first person shooter and it looks like it's drawn on a piece of paper and I flip the fuck out I flip the fuck out at this point I begin to look around the room and I'm really I'm probably peeking at this point the room is waving it looks like it looks like a heat signature you know from a really like hot asphalt you get that kind of wavy heat signature. And I look around and I'm like, okay, am I in hell? I must be in hell. And I look at him and he starts to look kind of evil. And I'm thinking, this, this kid's the devil. This kid is the devil. And I think he's the devil, so I freak out. I look up. We have this uh, a lava lamp sitting on top of the uh, TV stand. And it looks like a demon fetus. And that's the final straw. I'm fucking done. And I just stand up. I look at him and I go, I gotta get the fuck out of here. And he's like, dude, what? It's five in the morning at this point or something. And he's, he doesn't want me to leave. He doesn't think it's a good idea. He's doing his best to talk me into staying. I take that as he wants me to remain in hell with him. So uh, I grab my shit, throw on some sandals, and I fucking just book it out. At this point, like I said, it's like 5, 5.30 in the morning. It's, the sun is just coming up. So it's just, you know, getting light out. Uh, super, super low clouds. I mean, they must, they looked like they were two or 300 feet high. I mean, really low cloud ceiling. And it was thick cloud ceiling, but it was like, it wasn't storm clouds, it was just white, fluffy clouds. It was, I mean, it was gorgeous. And considering my frame of mind, everything, the colors were vibrant, um, sounds were louder, um, everything was beautiful outside. So I just, I'm, I'm living in a place where it's suburbs, but it's also somewhat rural. There's still uh, little ranches and farm, not, there were no real farms around actually, but ranches with huge, uh, huge swaths of land and they would keep horses on them, and some had cows and stuff like that. So, uh, I just, I start walking. And the further I get away from the house, the better I feel. And, and when I say the better I feel, I start feeling like I've never felt before, and I'll probably maybe never feel again. It was amazing. Uh, I just had this wonderful, calming, amazing feeling about me and almost feeling I felt at one with with nature uh, and, and and the universe I would say uh, and then oddly enough every time I would look back towards the apartment it would look evil there was I, I mean there would be be evil looking birds like flying around and it would kind of the trees would form themselves in this kind of evil manner and everything looked dark and almost stormy and it was weird because there was no stormy clouds anywhere it was only right when i looked back at the house no matter where i was it was really really strange uh, so every, you know every time i thought that i should go back because i was wearing sandals and my feet really hurt after a while i would look back and it was not a question i looked back for a second and thought nope that looks evil as shit. I am going to continue on. So I'm walking, and I'm loving everything. Uh, the trees are gorgeous. They're just kind of subtly blowing in the wind, and, and the movement of the leaves just you know tickles me inside. It's just beautiful. Uh, 
I come up to um, one of the ranches that's that's very close to the apartment. And, you know, I had gone on walks in this area before. We used to get drunk and just kind of walk around. And we always went this way. And we always knew there were horses there and they were super friendly. So, you know, I walk up and a horse comes up to me, just sticks its head over the fence. And I just go up and start petting it. And whew, it was amazing. I mean, when you feel, you know, when you're when you're on LSD or, or psilocybin, if you've ever done it, you you'll probably know what I'm talking about. When you feel this uh, this synergy with nature and the universe, uh, animals are beautiful and amazing. And um, it was it was just this beautiful experience. I just bonded with this horse uh, immediately, just petting its nose and just being awestruck, uh, hanging out with this horse, thinking how beautiful it is and how amazing life is in nature. Uh, so, you know, I'm hanging out there for a little bit and just loving the horse thing. But I do, I continue to feel this, uh, this urge that I need to walk. And the whole time, uh, I feel this urge to walk forward, not backwards. I think partially because backwards looks scary as fuck and forwards just feels good I just have this urge to walk forward I feel like there's a goal or a, a end game something that I need to reach um, so I continue on and I get to another larger ranch and it's got this really long dirt road shaped like an L that just goes right through it uh, they've got a big barn on one side and a house where they live uh, and then some land over there where they have horses and then there's a even bigger field where they have some other horses and as I'm walking down this dirt road which must be you know half a mile long pretty long dirt road I uh, I run into I don't run into it it's a horse actually runs up to the fence next to the dirt road and just mirrors you know what I'm doing just slows down and walks down the road with me and at this point I feel uh, the presence of my dad I for some reason suddenly get the feeling that this horse is my dad like my dad is inside the horse and he's walking with me just uh, almost saying hello in in his own way and uh, it was heavy I started I started crying uh, tears of joy not anything but joy I just felt as though I was with my dad and you know it was it was amazing I, I had uh, missed the hell out of him for a really long time and I got some previews of you know what I thought was my dad when my friend was talking to me, but this genuinely felt, for some reason or another, like my dad was the horse. And that's that's the last time that I really felt truly like I was with him. Even now, thinking about it, uh, you know, chokes me up a bit and it makes me, <sighs> makes me remember. I, I very clearly, clearly remember. And this was 17 years ago. 16, 17, 18 years ago, something like that. I'm 34 now, so it was a long time ago. Um, and whew, it was amazing. It felt like I was almost saying goodbye to him. Uh, and it's, it's an indescribable feeling to kind of get this second chance to, to see a loved one that has passed away. Um, so... I go through that, walk, end up, you know, walking down the road, and um, I kind of walk back through this neighborhood. At this point, it's probably, it must be 7 in the morning, and it was a weekday, so, I, and I'm still tripping pretty good, uh, so loud noises and stuff are, are not your friend a lot of times, and you know, I'm walking through neighborhoods, I'm seeing people waking up and going to work, and cars are driving by, and it's really, really loud. So, 
you know, I'm walking, uh, I'm doing my best to walk away from the loud main street. So, um, you know, at this point, I'm in sandals the whole time. My feet are destroyed, absolutely destroyed. Uh, I look down, I've got blisters. One of them is actually cut open and, you know, my blister's bleeding a little bit. Because I've been walking for probably, you know, three hours at this point. It had been, <laughs> it was a quite a journey. Uh, so, I end up walking up this big hill and I just, I just decide, look, once I'm done with this hill, I gotta get back home. I'm actually starting to kind of get tired, my feet hurt. Um, I just want to get to the top of this hill, sit down, because I knew there was a, uh, like a, it was this little school or something, and I knew there was, um, they had this cool yard in the back, and they had little benches. I could see it from the main street. So, um, I go up there, walk up to the top, there's, it's barbed wire fence all over the place, and I end up finding one spot of the barbed wire that's been, uh, you know, just kind of flattened. So I walk over the barbed wire, get up there, nobody's around, I don't know, it was summer so maybe the school was closed or whatever it was. Uh, turns out it was a religious school. And they have this just beautiful yard in the back with tons of big trees and beautiful flowers and you know, it's, it's gorgeous to me. Uh, the colors are just vibrant and it feels peaceful, it blocks out a lot of this, the loud cars and stuff that are driving by. Um, and just kind of blocks out the rest of the world. And I kind of just walk around, and there's these little coves that, that are going down a path. And these coves are each surrounded by trees. There's a bench, and then right in front of the bench, there is a plaque on the ground. So I go, and I'm just trying to find a spot to sit down. I just, all I want to do is give my feet a rest for a bit and just relax for a minute. Uh, so... As I jump into each cove, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I just sat, sat down and was like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I want to be in this cove. I'm going to go check this one out. So I bounce around between three or four coves, find one, and I just, I feel it. I feel, it feels right. So I sit down and I just relax for a minute, close my eyes and just, you know, give my feet a rest, kind of you know, talk or think about what I just experienced with the horse, uh, with feeling like my dad was there, and, you know, just start bawling. I just start bawling. And I look down, and I see the plaque in front of me, and the plaque says, I will always be with you. And it was an unknown uh, signature. It was just unknown. And that, <laughs> that was the heaviest part I in my head that was that was the final thing my dad wanted to tell me was he'll always be with me and it it was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life uh, I just tears of joy I started crying even harder but it's it's all tears of joy and just I, I, it's it's almost indescribable uh, how it felt, but like I said, it, it was like the last thing my dad was was telling me uh, in my head, and it, that was like the cherry on on the cake right there. Uh, seeing him in in the horse form, uh, <laughs> which sounds weird to just say it like that. Seeing him in horse form, uh, and then this final kind of message that I felt my dad had given me. Uh, you know, and I just sat there for, I don't even know how long, probably 20 or 30 minutes, just soaking it up, just loving it, and enjoying uh, every every bit of that beautiful garden and just the experience I had just had and uh, all of that. So, you know, I end up walking home after that and uh, getting home and, and going to bed waking up feeling refreshed, feeling amazing, and really feeling uh, very clear, a sense of clarity. So uh, after that, I stopped doing drugs totally, stopped drinking, stopped doing drugs totally, 
uh, for probably two or three months. Just didn't want to even touch anything. Um, and then, you know, I was I was in college at the time, so uh, moved into my own own place after that and started smoking marijuana again and, and uh, drinking and stuff. And, you know, nothing insane, nothing like I used to before. Uh, but suddenly I felt like I just had clarity about how, how much I was doing, uh, how it was way overboard, and how I needed to stop at least for a bit to, you know, clear my mind and, and kind of get things back in order, get my, get my life back in order, get my head clear. And it worked great. So, you know, LSD made me stop doing drugs for a while. And it cleared everything up. And, you know, to this day, I still think that that has a great effect on me. Um, you know, I think marijuana is amazing. I still love to smoke. But I do it occasionally. You know, twice a week, three times a week. Uh, sometimes less. Sometimes I'll quit for three or six months at a time. And then I'll smoke for a few six, you know, six months or, or so at a time. Um, but I've been smoking since I was 17, and it's always been, with the exception of, you know, about a year there, it's always been occasionally. And, you know, I think I think tripping on LSD or, or mushrooms or smoking DMT or doing ayahuasca, uh, I think if you do that stuff, it's these really heavy introspective experiences that are amazing and will help you uh, um, realize things you're doing in your life that you need to change for the better. And they are this, not party drug, but a very helpful, useful tool to reset and understand, you know, what you need to work on as a person to make yourself a better person. And that is, you know, my amazing experience with LSD, probably my most uh, amazing experience I've had um, on LSD or any, any drug that uh, has psychoactive effects. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys today. Thank you so much for listening. And if you ever want to check my stream out, it is twitch.tv slash bonsai. And I'll probably start doing more stuff here on this channel similar to this. And, uh, you know, they're probably not all going to be these drug-related stories, but just stories from life. And, uh, yeah. If you guys like, you know, hit the like button, or I guess that's Facebook, hit the subscribe button, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Share your stories as well. I would love to hear any amazing stories you have. Uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. We will see you next time.